Brothers gonna work it out. Brothers gonna work it out. Brothers gonna work Three, it two, out. one. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast of. Hold up, we didn't even name this joint. Oh no! Oh no! For right now, we're what gonna happened? Do... Can you hear me? I can hear you clear as day. Okay. Um, we're gonna call this Otto and and Hawk on film. Oh, uh-huh. just yeah. for just for right now Hawk till we, you know, Hawk and Otto. Just yeah, Otto and Hawk. Yeah, Hawk and Hawk and Otto. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, l- welcome to Hawk and Otto on film. Uh, we're here to discuss African American films throughout history and what we do and how we do because we do it well. My my name is Amory Hawkins, aka the Hawk, and with me I have Otto Box. That's it. You just you just. Yeah. <laughs> So like you had to really think about that, like uh, auto box. Uh, because I, I wanted I wanted to be clear and consistent, and I wanted to make sure what came after auto was something I was going to continue. I could dig so, it. Yeah, but from the yeah. branding standpoint, well, yeah. I, I could dig it. Yeah. Um, and, and ladies yeah. and gentlemen, if, if you all don't know, auto is actually calling in all the way from Australia. So for us to be able to pull something like this yeah. off, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. This, see. This podcast is going. I'm talking to y'all on the podcast yesterday. Uh, y'all talking tomorrow and stuff. This is crazy. I mean, I'm in. I'm in tomorrow morning with you guys right now. It's uh, um, Sunday. That's crazy. Ten o'clock in the morning, and you guys are at eight o'clock. It's eight o'clock at night. It's eight o'clock at night my time versus ten o'clock in the morning Sunday morning your time. Yeah, on you on Saturday. I'm on, on Saturday, Saturday you're on Sunday. It's Sunday over here. Man, that's kind yeah, of smoky, man, but, bro. I mean, for, for the love of the film, man, we, um, highway it happens, highway to Cosmos, or how it's connected intergalactically. Yeah. Or by the membrane, it works. And all it is is that it's right now. This yeah. present moment right now, we got Otto and Hawk on films. And uh, tonight's film that we're going to discuss today is. The man. Hopefully, I'll, I'll be able to have some music. <laughs> otherwise, <laughs> otherwise, we're gonna go with that. You know what? Um, when it comes to the 1970 film. I love that era specifically for the music. That wah wah guitar is just really what I man. When I hear that, I get goosebumps, bro. Uh, <laughs> man, that's like that's it, right? All, that's all I need to hear. I know it's about to go off just from that point. But the Mac again, it was produced, uh, directed, nineteen seventy three. Um, the writer of this particular movie, do you you don't have, by chance have the the author of it or the the writer? I do. Hold on, hold on. Uh, his name. Uh, the, uh, yeah, the, who are you asking me or them? No, I'm asking you. I got everything you got. Dig that. Well, the original script. Who was it written by? Uh, Robert Poole. Yes. Oh, Bobby Poole. Yes, is, is sir. That, uh, is that, am I right? Am I correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, that's it. Ding. Yeah. Uh, he, wrote, he, he wrote it on some toilet paper in prison. The dude that's was right? in prison and he wrote it on toilet. Like, you know, I, I understand. Ding, ding, ding. Yo. He's gonna get that. He's, you know, what I'm saying he gonna he gonna get his money somehow, some way. And as I understand uh, it, it, it was, oh, go, continue. As I understand it, the movie was based on his cellmate, who was um, a hustler and a pimp named Frank Ward uh, from Oakland. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so this is correct. Yeah, so I was like, you know, I I never knew that. I just I don't know when I saw the movie, you know, it was just something that I felt was real from a cultural standpoint. I didn't really realize that. Um, they're they're taking somebody's life and, and putting it out there. Yeah, yeah, man. A lot, lot of lot of um, things happened to him. Uh, that that same guy actually got killed on set. No, I didn't know that. Who? Uh, Bobby Poole or Frank Ward? Uh, no, no. Um, my guy, uh, my guy, uh, Frank Ward. No kidding. Frank Ward. Yeah. Now they yeah, said yeah. they said but, that Frank Ward got a, a part in the movie, but I didn't look that up into whose character he was. He was he was himself. He was playing himself. Well, he wasn't the pimp that was wearing all red. I don't remember. I don't. I don't know. Now I don't know which one he was on outfit. Yeah. But I, I know. Uh, I, I know. Um, he's in it, and he helped out a lot with the production. Uh, was making the movie go down because um, 
our director, Michael Campus, needed 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 protection to be able to shoot where he wanted to shoot in the story where he wanted to shoot the story. So, dude, this is how real it is in terms of making movie and so called being authentic. You know, with the scenery and with the backdrop. And, and you know what? I don't hear white people going through these type of issues. <laughs> no. You know what I'm saying? No. But the same thing was like no. Boys in the Hood. I, exactly. Even, not even even going to the to the struggle for uh, Robert Poor. Brother in jail, sitting in in the pen. He like, man, I got to do something different, man. This, 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 is, this is not the life for me. I cannot do this, man. Give me that, uh, give me that, uh, he already writing a script on toilet paper with his with his pinky with his pinky nail <laughs> saying. Now, I, now I don't, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's how dedicated he was. Of writing, writing a story, a movie in a pen on toilet paper. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. imagine that somebody came and took your toilet paper though. Oh, uh, you, you nigga didn't shit it on your script. Oh. <laughs> Oh my God! Oh, so can't do it. Anyway. Can't do it. Can't do it. Can't what? do it, man. But he got it done, man. But as you was talking, though, like it, it also again going back to the 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 culture of being black. Um, the movie, even though it's based out of you know off the life of Frank Ward, a hustler and a pimp, um, the hustle in making this movie was all throughout there, just from the part where you introduced yeah. writing the script on toilet paper. You know what I'm saying? Going to the territories right. of the right. where he ran the streets and getting permission. Like it's all it's all like the same principles and concepts that the movie developed. It's all there. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. And get and call and, and if you are those people out there that want to title this film about as a black exploitation flick, you're giving it no justice because it's 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 not what it is. It's more of a um uh social commentary. You know what? What was going on in the area at the time. You know what? I'm so glad that you said that because, oh, man, I feel like, yeah, so the labeling, I guess, is kind of necessary because the way the films were made back in the 70s, um, it was very specific and they did cater directly to our audience. However, it's like, well, they had to because they didn't have the funds. They didn't have the backing of the major studio. Like they didn't get behind it until they start seeing that money come in like, oh. Okay, we'll distribute you after we see what y'all do on y'all on the hustle end. You know what I mean? So it's like, and we still, we still, we still struggling with that today. Ain't that something? It's a cold okay. thing, but I mean, um, the world has changed because it seems like independents are winning, or oh, winning, are winning. Right, right. <laughs> no, I give you about it because because the independents, it's um, the consumer has has a better access to the producer. You know what I mean, the connection. It's not that it's not that hard for me to create something and get it in your hands uh, with the help of social media. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. and to uh, to your point, um, there's a like YouTube has been a great venue for people who want to create their original content. I've been watching this TV show yep. called Money and Violence, where dude just went out, took a camera, went through his hood, hired some of his homeboys, and they created. It's kind of like I don't want to compare it, but it is the same kind of theme as the wire where you know they got a dude that's hustling through his neighborhood in new york and you know the ins and outs yeah. of, of living that lifestyle and he's doing it with his own money with his own camera with his own crew and i'm like that's really dope to me i really appreciate that yeah it's, it's to that's the point fun. it's to the we point should, what's that i said i said we should do that more often yes sir um music companies are getting so hip to this whole thing where they're telling this is what i've been told they're telling their artists don't mention the company that they're signed under. Keep saying that they're independent because people respect that grind more than saying, "Hey, I'm signed to Jeff Jam." Like that has no significance anymore to be signed to a major label. All right. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. Right. So uh, let's go through a couple, a few more um, movie facts. You got one? Um. Yeah, man. Um. As well as um. Try to get um the access to shoot the film in certain spot, spots in Oakland during shooting, shooting the film um, Michael Tempest also had uh, confrontations with the Black Panthers because the Black Panthers wasn't due to the storyline of, of the script of 
the film. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Right. Um, Black Panthers took sort of offense to the film. I wasn't okay with the film. So, um, but they ended up, Michael Campus had ended up having to have a conversation with Huey Newton and, uh, and Bobby Seal. And they worked, worked things out and the Black Panther got, became involved in the film. And they, they, they um, they participated as extras in the film and also gave them protection in the areas that they ran in Oakland. Again, here's and a... Did, and, wait, wait, and, and did you know all proceeds of this film went to the Milk Fund? The what? Milk Fund? No, nah, what's that? The Milk Fund, man. All proceeds of this movie, the movie made by... Uh, Three million uh, in, in, in video, video rentals. All pre- proceeds of this film went to the Black Panther Milk Fund. Uh, I, I, that is like <laughs> super surprising to me. That, like I'm, I'm literally looking it up. Like, like how did I miss this? <laughs> It's funny. I even the milk fund, man. The milk fund. I, I don't even milk fund. So, can you uh, explain what the milk fund is? So it's literally like with Big Mama, she had the little secret stash of money to get the little incidentals. That's literally what it is. Yeah. That's crazy. No, I, I again. So it's like, what was the incentive in making this movie if the pro like let's let's be real and let me say this it's well, un- well, 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 well how about how about we talk about what is the movie about <laughs> that okay uh run it down um all right so um the movie's basically about you got your boy um goldie gold max julian max plays julian. Goldie. Uh-huh. goldie 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 Goldie, Goldie, uh, gets out of prison, been, just from doing like a five year bid, comes home, and, you know, he's like, man, uh, I need to, I can't, I mean, I gotta, I gotta make this money, you know what I mean? He got a brother who's in the Black Panther, and he's doing his Black Panther thing, um, and he ain't trying to go, he ain't trying to go right back to what put him in jail, which was sell- selling heroin in the street. So he ain't trying to do the drug deal thing. And then he just, you know, sitting around and stressed out, trying to figure out what to do. And all of a sudden, some, he had a, uh, he had a bitch who just chose him. So, and basically, the, I want to, I want to point out the brother was, uh, played by Roger Mosley, whose character name was Olinga. Yeah. If you don't know Roger Mosley, right. I think what I remember him by, um, he used to play on that TV show with the uh, with the white dude, Magnum P.I. He was like the sidekick to that cat. So uh, if you ever get a chance, look up Roger Mosley. I mean, he played in a whole lot of different films. He was also the manager. Well, he played a manager of a club in a thin line between love and hate. Um, if you remember, Martin Lawrence wanted to buy the club and that was he was his boss. So um, he'd been out here. He, he been there. He also played in one of my favorite movies. A lot of people don't know this. Uh, in a movie called Lead Belly, which uh, Lead Belly was a folk uh, singer, an African American folk singer, who Nirvana was. That was their favorite artist, and they took some of his songs what? and put it on their album. Yeah, it's pretty dope. So, I don't know. Is he black? Lead Belly. Is yeah, black? Lead Belly's a black dude. I got, okay, I gotta go. I gotta go get some of his stuff. Yeah, he spent. He he spent half his life in prison. And he, I mean, he has so many songs that um, he's actually been, uh, there's like a little, this is off the cuff, I just something I remember. You know how they take people and make them like historical monuments or, you know, like when you contribute to society? It's in Washington, D.C. So they took all of his songs that he created, recorded it, and put it in uh, an historical vault and named it an American treasure piece or something to that extent. So yeah, Lead Belly, he's a big deal. He just never got paid for it. Uh, and what kind of music does Led Belly make? Uh, folk music. So, he make? yeah, one song that he did that everybody think Nirvana made, 
Um, where did you sleep last night? My girl, my girl, don't lie to me. Tell me where did you sleep last night? Come on, tell me, baby. In the pines, in the pines, where the sun don't ever shine. I wish you were all night too. My girl, do you, do you my remember which one I was? Where we no, but I will check it out later. Okay, for sure. So yeah, um, I, I think that's. Let me. I'm looking up real quick. Yeah, it's called. It 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 was it was played on their MTV unplugged version. It's called Where Did You Sleep Last Night? And um, I mean, Nirvana did that thing. And like I said, I thought it was their song until I did some research, and it was actually Lead Belly, African American folk singer from the South. And you know, that's that. So yeah, back back to the movie. Um, as you as you alluded, so and Goldie being a heroin dealer with his sidekick played by Richard Pryor, uh, we can't forget that. Oh wait, 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 you got, well, we ain't, no, we ain't got that far yet. He won uh, Richard Pryor wasn't his sidekick yet. He ain't. This is before. No, uh, he was there. He was there. The, the he was there right in the very beginning. It was in the shootout scene. In the shootout scene, it's it's him right. and Richard Pryor. They they firing it off. They, you know, and pretty much they got set up, and they um, nobody knows how the setup went down. But Richard Pryor was like, "I can't leave you, Goldie." Goldie was like, "Get out of!" And this is the thing that bothered me, Otto. So Goldie tells Richard Pryor, uh, whose character name was Slim, he told him to get out of there, and and Slim is holding the M16 while Goldie got a nine millimeter. So I'm like, if I'm gonna tell you to go, can you at least drop the M16? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Uh, like what are you doing? What are you uh, doing? So uh, uh Rich, tra- let's 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 uh trade. You can take this <laughs> when I get out. But Goldie, I mean uh sure. Slim got up out of there. He dr- and look, this would piss me off. He dropped the M sixteen in the water to hop the fence. So now Goldie <laughs> So Goldie just got his pistol, jumped in the car, got caught by the two white cops who end up playing um the big adversary. Um, the protagonist, or the, excuse me, the antagonist throughout the whole movie, which out of explain to me, yeah, why did they hate Goldie so much? I didn't, I, I never, I didn't understand this as I watched this movie. Um, that's, I think, I, I, I think were, um, that was the way of reflecting on the two cops represented um, white America. Oh, so it was a bigger, and, it was a bigger situation. White Americans hate. On hate on you know just keep um, basically allowing drug dealers to sell money, uh, having crooked cops and in the, in the crooked cops working rather than trying to help the community is really um, um, assisting with ruining the community. You know what? <laughs> so, um, and that's what these type of quote unquote black exploitation movies did. They they took what but, was going uh, on. It's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a black exploitation flick, but it can be, I can, I understand how it can be grouped as a black exploitation flick. Well, you got, well, d- defend your position. Why do you, why do you think that it's not a black exploitation? I, I, I my opinion is, right. whoever, cre- who, whoever created the thing has to say on what it is. Not everyone else who observes something they created. So if the creator says this movie is not a black exploitation flick, it is this, then I gotta respect what the creator said. Well, it, th- that's okay. true, but in the de- so the definition of black exploitation is the exploitation of black people, especially with regard to stereotype roles in movies, and. I, that's why I still, even though he calls it, a, I think he's calling it a social commentary. The same reason why um, Tay Diggs didn't want the Wood or Love and Basketball or whatever movie that Brown Sugar to be called black movies. Once you call it a black movie or put it in that category, it doesn't make money. You know what I mean? It, it, exactly. So, like, like, especially like, like for the Wood, at the Wood, and the same as um, um, 
the mud. If these movies are based on true life stories, why is it considered a black exploitation thing? I ain't never heard of a fucking white exploitation flick, have you? No, it's just regular uh, Full House. You know what I mean? It's just regular TV. You know what I'm saying? Like, why the stuff is black? How do you black exploitation? No, duh. I guess they more, more so... Huh? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Finish your point. Um, I guess they more... When it comes to more black exploitation, they more so concerning, like, some of the films, like, an example, my boy Dolomite, how it films where he was more like a big badass motherfucking pimp who knew kung fu. Okay. You know what I mean? And so, you know, you know what I mean? You, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? But he was a pimp. But he, yeah, he was a pimp. He talked shit and he knew kung fu. So again, <coughs> black exploitation to me is what they're saying is like, oh, black superheroes, like. Like we're exploiting black culture, we're exploiting negative black culture. By praising it and enjoying it. <laughs> well, that's well, that's what I, I really feel like. That's what they did. Like, even though this is a, these are black writers and black directors that are putting the movie out there, they are still taking like, even though it's a real portrayal of the desolation <laughs> in the hood. Look at your superhero. Your superhero is a pimp. <laughs> Come on, dog. Your superhero is a drug dealer. Like, no, black people are way more dynamic than that. Right, so, and, right, but it, so, but it, it runs deeper than it is. It's deeper than like, okay, we are in a society where the poor have gotten to the point where they look forward to a life of what, quote unquote crime. Yo, Which is what we call, uh, you know, white society. So, I mean, who, who's saying that's like that's like a white kid saying, "I want to grow up and be a freaking uh, uh, mercenary." Right. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Who, who's the judge? He's still going out killing people. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Kid, I bet. I bet he's getting. I bet he's getting a kick out of it. So, is that wrong? You know what I mean? So, what's wrong with a pimp? Somebody's going to hurt the end. He's hustling. He's out here. If it's, I mean, I, you can't. You can't get mad. This bitch chose him. You know what I mean? You can't get mad. If, if they choose him, which they tend to do, then that's the business he is. Because we love women like that. So, you know what I mean? And he wasn't, he wasn't, he wasn't like a bad, he wasn't a bad, all pimps ain't bad. All, you know what I mean? All pimps ain't bad. And they all look, they, they, they don't all look the same either. So, the, to my two comments on, on that, <laughs> I don't know what it could get. Like, yo, I don't want to side check too much. <laughs> but but the 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 one part that I do agree with you on is that um again, out of this era of movies that's dedicated towards black people, these were the movies that I and I think they struck a chord and they got close to us. Same thing like in comparison, Baby Boy, Boys in the Hood, Minister Society. Like these are very specific right. pieces that speak to very specific right. environments. Now, I don't agree and I straight don't Straight out of Compton. Straight out of Compton is dope. But these this is not the experience of all black people and especially like when you look at the history of black people on film and the type of characters that they played you don't want this to be the precedent and saying, yo, because these are the role. Uh, as a matter of fact, think about your boy now and how many roles he's played outside of the characters that he's done. Uh, have you ever watched The Wire? I never asked you. Yes, I have. So the character that plays, yes, the character that plays Omar, um, I forgot that brother's name, but you know what I'm talking about, right? Omar, Omar. He he was Omar, like Omar. he was like the dude, like oh yeah 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 with, with the star on his face. Yeah yeah yeah, yeah. the the, yeah, yeah. the, the gay I, thug. Yeah yeah, we, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he got his first um, biggest thing that I remember. He got a part in um, uh, R. Kelly's trapped in the closet. He replaced the policeman and pulled him over. Ooh. And that, that, that's when he, then everything started to fall. Uh, started to just you know all the good things started to happen for him after that. Yeah. Rose. 
Well, I, the, the the type of roles that he's played to me has been consistent based on the one that he broke out of. I think the like he's played in many movies beyond this, and actually he's a classically <laughs> trained uh, dancer. But he has played the exact same role to me. No, I fact, let's do a bigger let's do a bigger uh, actor. Denzel Washington has Denzel Washington ever played a character that's not smooth and debonair and uh, you know real suave? Like has he ever played outside of that realm? I I, I I think I'll let you wait and think about it because you know he got a lot of work. Mal- Malcolm X, he was a smooth dude. Uh, that movie, what he did was Sanaya Lathan. He was a smooth cop. Um, like he's the same in Training Day. You know, slick talking dude. He's the same character in every single movie that he plays. Well, At- you know, well, okay. I won't, I won't say he's the same character, but he he has a he has a smoothness to him. But he's not the same character. Do you I think mean, that's by choice? You can't. You, go ahead. Do you think that's by choice? No, that's just the the the, the, um, the denominator of his um, which I can come from. Well, well, that, and what I what what I think, just like Morgan Freeman, Morgan Freeman always plays this. Um, authority figure who has you know an upward moral standard outside of car wash. <laughs> I think Hollywood has pegged him and looked at this. So when I when we look at the movie The Mac, this is my argument. Um, they've pegged these characters, and it's acceptable because white America or mainstream America at that time can absolutely envision these people and Black America being in this way. <laughs> And this, but this wasn't all of Black America. There were plenty of successful Black people, but their story wasn't being told or being accepted on film. They hated Sidney Poitier when he played um, opposite of a white woman. You know what's that movie called? Uh, I can't even tell you. To serve with love, or I can't even tell you. you know what I'm talking about. I, I know what you're he, saying. Yeah, he, I know yeah. The cover. So they they didn't like that. They don't like those type of roles for Black people. They like for Black people to play. Stereotypical thugs, pimps, drug dealers. But but, but 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 why would why would they, they care if they're not even gonna allow them to show the films in white theaters anyway? So the, the movie was the movie was only um, was was only like uh, released in in certain uh, certain theaters. It was limited release and it was released three times. It came out in the theaters. In 1973, first, right. Then it was re-released in 1978, and then re-released again in 1983, and then 2002 it came out on DVD. That and uh, I, I was actually looking but, for that information. But, Thank you for putting but, that out. But but they they um they weren't opening the movie up to all demographics, all cultures. I mean, they if they felt if they already if you're telling me. We're making movies a certain way because white people ain't gonna watch it if we don't. Then why? Then why will we allow them to watch it? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think if we're already gonna be blocked. If, if we are, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. Yeah, if we're already gonna, if we're already gonna be blocked and not, uh, oh, we don't want you to make positive movies because it offends us. So <laughs> we're, gonna make, we're gonna make non-offensive films to you for you. Yeah. But then if we make it non-offensive, we're not gonna be allowing you to watch them in your theater. So then. Why? Why even bother? Just make everything that's offensive to them. I could dig it. Why? I mean, why I care? And yeah. Because I mean, put, air it anyway. So, so let, let me go back on one of your comments and, and kind of let's let's kind of dig that because I actually struggled with what you said because in the movie I struggled with it. You said that all pimps are not bad, and so when I watched the movie, um, the normal story arc of a movie is that there's a good guy, bad guy, conflict, <laughs> conclusion. I didn't get that from this movie in terms of good guy. I did get the bad guy, but Goldie as a person, I, I didn't really have a feeling one way or another. I just felt like he was part of the the culture. I didn't think he was a good guy, but I didn't think he was a bad guy. I, thought, I just thought he was hustling. He was playing a game. But, right. he, but, 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 but the game chose him. No, the game didn't choose him. She, <laughs> she, it did. It did chose him. The dude went. Now remember, the girl chose him. But remember, when Goldie got out of prison, right. he did five years. He went right back to his mentor right. in the pool hall, and his mentor was running game down to him like, "I'm gonna make you 
so rich, your pocket's gonna look like he got mumps. Like he's giving, he's pumping this dude's head up. So like he could have walked away from the lifestyle. Like he, don't, he did. He didn't want that because he didn't want to do that. He didn't want to do the drug game. He didn't want to do the heroin. And then he was debating on what he was debating, but he know he didn't want to be no damn black Panthers. Like, right. hey, man, ain't no money in that. <laughs> ain't no money in that. But he know he needs to make money. Yeah. So she yeah. needs to make money. I got a woman here who who's gonna give me money. Who's gonna just give me money? <laughs> I, I, I mean, I'm gonna work this. And, uh. And you gonna help me? You gonna get. Like, oh, man, heck no. Heck yeah. You can't. Man, you, that's, that's like your wife. No matter how you wanna judge it or not, that's, that's his wife. That's like his wife. His woman, his woman told she's gonna take care of me, and our business is providing sexual favors, um, getting a, a, a staff of women to provide sexual pleasures to our customers. That's the business. So the the woman that well, chose... Well, it's son, Go ahead. Lulu. Her name is Lulu. Carol Speed. Carol Speed. Which I didn't know she's still living. Uh, she I, She's from Bakersfield, California. Um, shout out to Callie. Uh, I don't know where she's living at now, but I uh, just want to put that out there. If anybody will look her up. Um, she's a little visitor. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, don't don't visit her. Don't do that. Write her a letter. Say I appreciate your work. But um no, I don't think I don't think your bottom woman is like a wife. I don't I don't see that at all. Because um in the truest nature and what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to separate like my moral outlook from um the the gist of the film. And I I'm not gonna like I'm not gonna respond to the film based on how I see life. The film was is based on okay. hustling and pimping. However, your right. your your, oh, an, right. your right. analogy of the bottom woman being like I a did. wife and all the stuff that she provides, I did. I'm like, no, I don't, I don't really agree with that because the pimp is only about one. Like, no matter, and and I got to give Goldie um, much credit in this movie because his game was absolutely. He never deviated from the point of what uh, pimping is all about, and that's getting money. No matter who it is. Now the woman that okay, chose but, him. But did, at the end of the day, did, did he did he love and respect her? I don't know where these bitches are. Ain't nobody's out in the corner. Where the hell are they? I gotta straighten their hands out, you know. I let a bitch get away with something last night. I shouldn't have let her get away with it. Put a foot to us. What you said, put a foot to her ass? Right on, baby. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Put a foot to her ass. That's just what I'm gonna do. Wow. You listen to me, and you listen to me closely. I don't give a shit about what happened to you. Now I want you to get yourself together and get back out there and get me my money. Now I don't care how long it takes you, you get out there and get it. Now get it. No, he did not. Uh, I give you, I give you a point. I was gonna wait till we get to the scene, but um, so when he felt that she was running game on him. When it was in the car, he was with his, his hustling partner. He was coming down the street. She just got robbed. She comes around the corner. She's crying. Goldie, he stuck me up. Da, 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 da. I need help, protection. And Goldie got cold. He was like, you know what? I don't care about you. I don't care about what you're going through. Go get my money. And at that point, she so she thought they were in love. And I, again, that was part of the game. But once, you know, push comes right, to shove. Right, 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 right. And, yeah, yeah, and if that that was just that moment, and if if you said that he thought that she she was trying to game him, uh, well, so in the scene prior to that, um, other pimps was calling him to get game because uh the other pimps women was gaming him, so I guess in his head he right. said he already he was making commentary with his pimp friend. He was like, I got tighten my girl's heads up because I let something slide yesterday. I shouldn't have let it slide. So he got cold. Right. He put on his pimp hat. 
And when, when, yeah. it, when his bottle he, came he, 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 Yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he tuned up. It's still a, he, he, he fine-tuned his role as pimp. It's like a father fine-tuned his role as being a better father. No, dog. You and, know. I don't. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, because she's no. I'm saying, listen. Just let me, let me, okay. let me, let me finish. All right. So, so the fact that she wants to be a part of the game of selling her body, like she could take care of him in another field, whether he was like mechanics or something like that. But she, she is, she feels she's only she feels and is okay with giving her body. She likes doing that. Wait, wait. And let me ask you. Let me ask you a quick question. Man. Let me ask you a quick question. Do you think she knew the truest sense of who he was? You know something. Something that bothers me, man. What bothers you, nigga? Well, if you listen, I'm gonna tell you, right? Now, I just can't get it in my head how a bitch can walk the street every night. I mean, even in the rain, you know, and take a chance on maybe getting robbed or sent to jail. Or maybe even getting her arm broke by some sadistic fool out the suburbs, right? Mm -hmm. And then she gets all that money, and then she takes it and gives it to some dude. I mean, I just can't figure that shit out. Game is strong, baby. Well, I ain't talking about me. I'm talking to other cat. <laughs> uh, Do you think she really knew him? Interested. Okay. No, she wanted to, though. She was interested. Agreed. I well, believe... At, the point, at that point, no, I'm saying when she first met him, but at that point. I'm talking about period. Like, from the time that she met him to the end of the movie, do you think she really knew who he was? Yeah. I disagree. I'll let you finish your point, but I, I disagree. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the reason, and the reason why I disagree is because he, when she, you know, he was already on his, when he first got out of prison, um, and he was in a barbershop listening to the other pimps run game down. He was soaking it up. He was like, okay, I can see him kind of it. like, I can see his mind clicking. Now, when she chose him, yeah, yeah. he's sitting at the bar. I mean, he's sitting in the booth. She comes up sitting next to him and she's, you know, she's like, I'm an outlaw, which, you know, for some of y'all squares, that don't know <laughs> being an outlaw is somebody that doesn't have a pimp who, who hasn't chosen. And she out there tricking, um, without any representation so she was like nobody likes me around here i'm an outlaw but it's because i haven't found the right man to she was literally looking for love protection yes. and all that other stuff yes. and so as a pimp yes. as a pimp yes. you're like yo i can play that role for you just bring me my money yes. that's not knowing a person that's yes. playing a role exactly and that's the role she chose <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, at the end of the day, I did. At the end of the day, come on, I, I bet I know that nigga. He, he, he um, you got you got to have some sort of care because you got to get the money. So at the end of the day, whether it's, it, it, I'm not saying it's the best. I'm not saying it's, it's what we all should inspire to be. But there has to be some care and responsibility of the person because that's your property or what you claim to be your property or your money maker or your money maker machine so you need that at the end of the day I, you and I you have to be I, hard on it you you could be an a, the person could be an asshole about it or the person could be nice and gentle about it I mean you and, and I have probably had yeah, different still, I'm sorry go ahead yeah but they um they um he still so heartedly Still cares about her. <laughs> well, the, the, the evidence, uh, yeah. the evidence that, I, I, of course, he cares about her. I think he cared about all the women that he had because um, anything you put time and investment in, in terms of your money, um, you want to see the fruition of that. You know, and the white girls that he was pulling, he cared about the white girls because they was going to eventually pay off for him. The only woman that the movie demonstrated that he had a genuine affection, and so this is what I see. This is how I interpret caring. From the movie context, not from my my perspective, but strictly from the movie, Goldie, when he went to go visit his mother, he his he never asked anything of his mother. He did for her mm -hmm. based on his appreciation for what she did for him. There was a genuine, absolute adornment. Um, spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! She gets killed at the end, <laughs> and that drove him crazy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So. That's what I cut in, in the context of the movie. That's who he cared. That's who he loved for everybody. And he, he mentioned that everybody and everything else is just part of the game. It's not a love. It's not a love thing from a pimp game. 
It's not mm-hmm. about love. He said, I love when you bring me my money. And when the money stops, so does the love. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, let's let's move forward. So let's introduce his brother because I think this is a – and tell me your thoughts about this, this juxtaposition or this side-by-side uh, conflict where you have this brother who is a black nationalist um, versus this guy who's hustling out here in the streets. So you got this brother who – and, and what I didn't know, I had to do my research. The brother used to hustle, and he used to sell drugs. And he came out the life. I guess him right. and Goldie used to hustle together. He came out the life. He wants to help his people by empowering them, doing the same thing that Black Panthers are doing. And Goldie is doing the exact opposite, even though he is giving money to the kids. <laughs> How did you feel about that relationship? What? I mean, um, well, I mean, I feel Olinga was... Uh, just, just on a whole other path and on a, on a moving in the, in the right direction that was going on in the community at the time. Right. And, um, and, and there was a split, there was a split between, uh, do we want to uplift our people or do we want, or do we want to be just like the rest of the capitalist world and, and uh, make money? For the, for the record, in this meeting, uh, there was a mess there's 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 one, there's, there's, there's actually one, there's one, actually one particular line in the movie where uh, Goldie's talking to his mother, um, or his brother, uh, and he says, he says, um, um, you ain't never heard, uh, I'd rather be called a, 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 a uh, I'd rather be known as a, um, a rich black man than a poor black man. He did say uh, and uh something like that. Yeah, yeah. Some, something that some something something that fashion. Yeah. Um but but saying yeah, like I I mean I would rather do I got I, I need uh we need money. I don't wanna be poor. I mean and just tired of being poor. And want a chance of a better life. Right. And, and so what I saw um is the writer was trying to communicate Um, The dynamics of being black On one hand Some people feel like this is the only life that they have This is the only example that they're given And they show examples of that Of the little kids running up to the car when Goldie pulls up And Goldie gives out dollars For people to stay in school and stuff like that So he's playing the neighborhood hero Even though in the same instance That he's giving dollars to the little black boys He's taking the black women and putting them out there On the street so it's like There's a crazy juxtaposition in that However the social commentary that Olinga was giving, I felt like, especially during that time, was much needed. And the only redemption of this movie, in terms, of if you if we want to look at the redeeming factors, was that they was trying to say, yeah, there is more to life and black people outside of pimping, hustling, and getting money. There are people out there that actually care for their people and want to do something positive. Uh, but we need well, we need to link up, and we all need to stay together, stick together, and do this. So, like. I felt that character was was necessary to bring everything full circle. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. So now we move forward. Um, halfway through the movie, uh, Goldie has has hustled his way to having five or more women. Um, he pulled in a white woman. F- for the record, the white woman scene, the first white chick that he was spitting at, was probably the slickest stuff I've ever heard on film ever. <laughs> Ever since I was 13, my biggest problem has been just to find the right road to get to that rainbow that everybody talks about. And like most people get close enough to count the stripes, but they don't have enough guts to reach out and take that pot of gold. And what are you going to do? I'm going to walk off with the whole pot. Are you going to share that with anyone? There's a possibility I might share it with a little lady I just met who calls herself Diane. It's not going to be easy, though, baby. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be hard work. I really have a lot of good feelings. I know when I first saw you, I just wanted to touch you and hold you. And there's an incredible excitement about you. Something very powerful. Yeah, I had those good feelings about you when I first saw you. So where do we go from here? 
You go all the way to the top if you're not afraid. Everything's gonna be all right. I'm gonna be everything to you. I'm gonna be your father. I'm gonna be your friend. I'm gonna be your lover. But you gotta believe in me. You gotta believe that everything I tell you to do is for the best. For both of us, okay? to what we're getting into. Like, even the music, I choose you. Like, I was like, oh, oh wait. <laughs> I mean, he was really running yeah. game down. So he was like, um, I could take it. He was like, I could take you to the top of the world, baby, <laughs> if you're willing to go there. And she was yeah. like, I just feel comfortable. <laughs> I was like Goldie, he owned it, and he never. And and the thing about Goldie, he didn't represent like the gorilla pimping. He didn't have to put his hands. His thing was all psychological, making the females feel comfortable. Which I've been told in terms of pimping, that's the best way to pimp because you can only slap a female so long until she gets used to that. But once you get into her mind, man, you can do whatever you want with her. That's a wrap. Um, there was a scene, I don't know if you remember the scene, where uh, he was talking to his brother, Olinga. He was like, why don't you come with me? I got this little rundown where I do a show for my women. And so they cut to a scene. They're in the theater, literally in a theater. He's doing the whole lights with stars coming at him, 3D version. And he's speaking over a loud uh, microphone. You're in my family, and to be in my family, you must know the rules. You will never lie to me. And the females are in trance, like, oh, what is going on? Like, he was running game on every single level. And I was like, I got it. I don't, now let, let me get this straight. I don't support pimping, but in the context of this movie, if you was going to be a pimp, he was doing it right. <laughs> yeah, he was. Yeah. He was. Yeah. And I uh, don't know if you notice how this being this movie being uh, based about a pimp being all sexy and stuff. There were, there were no actual sex scenes in the movie. There wasn't. So, you know I never thought. I, you know what? No. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, it sure wasn't. There was a, there was a few little. Provo- you know what? Thank you for bringing that up because there was one scene in particular that really really bothered me. And then when I did my research, I pulled up um, a quote behind it. And now you, I'm sure you remember the scene, the two cops that throughout the movie has been pressing Goldie, um, AKA Julian, uh, Max Julian, and they just have a, a hard on to get him back in prison for whatever reason. Oh, well, I guess the reason is cause they was working for the big man, the big white man. And, uh, they, exactly. the, re- the, the reason is because, uh, Goldie used to work for the dope man yeah. and Goldie don't want to work for the dope man anymore. So dope man said, all right. Cops, once you, I don't like him. You know, get him out of here because he's a th- obviously he's a threat to me, and he's not he's not falling in line. So right, do that for me. Uh. And then yeah, and so it, yeah, exactly. So yeah, man, it was it was it was it was it was happening on the screen and on the set at the same time. Man. So in one of the scenes, one of the bad cops, um, though he has a perceived hate for black people. Um, was in bed with a black prostitute who was overweight. And this is what IMDB said about this particular scene. Max Julian found the scene where the cop is shown to be sleeping with the big black woman offensive. The director shot it behind his back. When he asked why he shot the scene, Michael Campus said he wanted the character to be shown as decadent. Julian found this even more offensive because of the girl's race and weight making it decadent. To this day, Julian finds this one scene to be his only regret about the film. The actress in the scene, Norma McClure, is said to not have been acting and did not enjoy doing the scene. Uh, and, and I thought, when I watched that scene, I felt very uncomfortable. And I, th- and I thought that was the purpose, like this putting his hands on her breasts and bigging her up. But at the same time, demoralizing her and putting her in her, like it was everything about it felt wrong. And I was like, and she she didn't say anything during that scene. She looked genuinely disgusted. So I was like, wow, I really felt that. So to read this, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. 
So that was, the, I guess, that was the closest scene that you would get towards uh, what you alluded to earlier in terms of the sex. Yeah, that, I mean, even even the scene where um, Goldie, Goldie and uh, Lou, Lou, they first did it. They just cut to, well, they, you see they get into it and it cuts off, you know? I, and I think, same, you know, you know. Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, you good. Go ahead. I think um, they and they, you know what they probably did have sex scenes, but in editing, it just didn't make sense to Goldie's character because Goldie he wasn't about he wasn't about that part of the game. He didn't care about that. His only goal and mission was to be successful while being black, and this is the way and the route that he chose. Which now I thought it was kind of weird that scene that you're talking about. Um, the general rule for a pimp is he don't get in the bed unless a woman pays first. It's like reverse pimp. I mean, it's reverse uh, prostituting. So for him to get in bed with her with, before she starts getting out on the track for him, I was like, oh, man, you already met. So he already messed up. <laughs> but he, I guess he redeemed mm -hmm. himself. You know what I mean? By the way, Lulu's character. Hey, I, I, but but, but, but I, that's, that's why. Him going in the bed with her, I saw I say he had to do a, a certain kind of way for her. Oh, uh, I don't do that. Don't do that. No. <laughs> <laughs> so you, first of all, he connected. He went there with her. First of all, he let's connect it with her. <laughs> let's so let's 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 break that part down. So in that very same scene, um, he had a dream yeah. sequence, and in that dream sequence. He got money raining down on him. He got women circling around. Like, Lulu wasn't part of the program, dog. She was part of the situation. It wasn't her. It was the prostitute in her. Thank you, baby, because you are dead. Her, her, being, her always being the first one makes her special, bro. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna lose all our female <laughs> listeners behind. <laughs> Come on, the first, the first. Oh her, no! Her, her being the first one makes her somewhat special. Oh no! Oh man! Well, there goes that. Uh, the first and everything is special, right? Is the first and everything special, right? Yeah, but that's like saying, um. The first person who I robbed is special. Yeah, you know I mean, like, no, I robbed him. There's, there's nothing. There's nothing special well, about that. It, I mean, I mean, no, no, it's, it's a special moment for you. I mean, however you look, it may not be, it may not be no longer be special if you don't, if you're not into robbing. But if somebody who gets a kick out of robbing, yeah, they'll be talking about. Remember, like uh, Nino Brown. I'm uh, sorry, watching another movie like Nino Brown in New Jack City when when he was talking about his first kill. Right. It's a, it's a special moment, you know what I mean? It just if that's the life you live, then that's gonna be that's gonna be special to you. So you're only using special, not that it's a, a good reference. You're just saying that it's a it's a significant moment. It's it's a it's a moment that's marked yeah. out in time that really stands out because it's okay. I agree with you. I, I get that. I'm with it because right. I, I was interpreting special as in like losing your virginity. You know what I mean? That was special because it was to that, the one that, that I love. That that too. No, I mean, what, no, what, what, no matter who it was, the first time, the first time it ain't be the one you love. You, you, just your first time, the first time it happened, the first time something came out, especially. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, just, it's just the first time. <laughs> it's the first time, man. Uh, well, you know, shout, shout or, out. Or, or, but I mean, no, I got, I take it back. No, because you look at it on the flip side, um, it can it can be traumatizing as well too. And, and that's what. So, thank you for telling the full picture. That I, for throwing that in there, I don't have to make a point behind that. Just because it's special doesn't mean that it's not traumatic. That was that's my whole point. That's all I wanted to say. So, getting towards so the the circle of the movie is that Goldie's pimping. He's hustling. He got his women. He's running game. Everybody is respecting. As a matter of fact, one of his quotes said that <laughs> his quote was, "I'm a pimp so hard." Um, they're going to be mentioning me like they mentioning Jesus. You know what I mean? Like, he wants to be on that mm -hmm. type of level. So, towards the back end of this movie now, the two cops are on top of him because he's refusing to go back with the fat man who's uh, who's the white guy in the, in the movie who runs the streets in terms of the drugs. Um, he runs into another character, Pretty Tony. Tell me your thoughts about Pretty Tony. Mm. Pretty Tony... Uh, pretty Tony played by uh, Dick Anthony Williams uh -huh. uh, was 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 uh, uh, Goldie's rival pimp, uh -huh. and 
I just, I, <laughs> these are some of the guys you've seen in film. Right. I'm not going to, I'm not going to any film. These are some of the classics, classic, uh, sparring scenes in the film with words, man. It's just, uh, <laughs> the culture so, it's so raw and so vivid. It just, it just, <laughs> the game is put off the time so slick. <laughs> Dog. Oh, man. When, when I think of, like, when I think of pimping, and well, let me, when I first saw this movie, um, because I wasn't really hip to the culture, Goldie didn't resemble what pimping looked like to me. Pretty Tony, and everything that he said and did, I was like, he was the prototype of pimping. And then, of course, when I got older, I understood a lot better. However, Pretty Tony still, embol- like, he symbolized, if you ever seen the documentary about uh, the HBO documentary, um, uh, what's that joint called? Uh, with Pimp Snooky and uh, all those other pimps. It was a pimp from Washington, D.C., Really slick with the tongue, really loud, really boisterous. You know what I'm saying? He was like, I'm trying to pimp in the White House. I'm trying to get, you know, he's doing all the whole, you know, loud talking. That's who Pretty Tony reminded me of. But Pretty Tony was much more, I think he was much more boisterous than who he really was. Does that make sense? Yeah, well, yes, it does. Yeah, so he. I also believe. Go ahead. I also believe, I also believe that, um, Goldie looks more like a like a Hollywood like a Hollywood pimp. Pretty Tony looks more gives you the real raw true pimp, like rugged pimp. You know what? Thank you for bringing that up because um, there's also a theme with these types of movies. Uh, Goldie is act the character Goldie. Well, uh, Max Julian is actually a classically trained actor. Who, by the way, um, what's my man name? Now that I'm saying that. Ah, uh, the other the the other movie, Blaxportation. Um, he was a hustler, light skinned dude, Which one? big Stop. afro. Oh, I gotta get um, back to it. Um, uh, uh, Kung Fu, um, um, Jimmy. Um, uh, he was. I think he was a cocaine dealer. Uh, he had a super big mustache. Oh, uh, 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 um, Superfly. Uh, 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 Superfly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the the the, well, the boy, um, what's my man name? His name is uh, Ronald. Yes. I want to say Ron. I, I want to say Ron Isley, but it's not Ron Isley. No, it's not Ron Isley. Um, but it's Ron something. But, but you know what I'm talking about. Well, that that brother was he was a classically trained, and it, he's really obvious because the way he's you know really big and boisterous, and he enunciated all of his words when he spoke. All of you Negroes will leave the room today. <laughs> and so, <laughs> Ron, uh, Ron O'Neill was his name. Ron, uh, who do you think you are? <laughs> Ron O'Neill or something? Miss Society shout out. But yeah, um, so he was a classically trained actor. And so Max Julian, that's what was different about him. He fell in that saying he was a Broadway actor and he did those types of deals. So my man Pretty Tony, no, he didn't fall in that realm. He was matter of fact, he was born in the shy. He's from the west side of Chicago. Um unfortunately he died in 2012 in, in Van Nuys, uh, California. But he had hood all throughout him. That's that's who he was. Yeah. But Pretty Tony wasn't a problem to me. You know what I mean? It was only a problem to to my man. He didn't have nothing to do. He was just, he was a hater. He got knocked for his females and he was a hater. That was all I saw. Yeah. He was bit, a bitter ass pimp. He was. I like a bitter ass pimp. <laughs> he was. I ain't gonna lie to you. You know, he, he, was, he, 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 was, he was super bitter. You know what I'm saying? You know the game. <laughs> Your female chose me. I, I, I think he did, he couldn't accept that. But the funniest part of the movie is when um the, the dude next to him laughed after Goldie said that. And he said, shut your mouth when grown folks are talking after popping his mouth with a boot. <laughs> like, yeah, he was like, like, the whole, we don't realize how much of black culture actually came out of this movie. Dave Chappelle and the Haters Ball skit, that's all I saw was Pretty Tony. That's all I saw. Uh, that was the only thing. Yeah, even, um, even, even observing uh, Black Dynamite. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The, um, the animated cartoon show Black Dynamite, Players Ball, all it, 
got players like reference to pretty pretty Tony and and Goldie. Now um, we're we're at the end of the movie and we didn't say not one word about Richard Pryor. How okay. that? Well, uh, <laughs> and I run, I run, <laughs> I I didn't run, man. Uh, Richard, uh, God bless Richard Pryor, the great. Yeah. Um, uh, that was that was that was that, that was. Uh, I was referencing to one of my favorite scenes in that movie with Richard and uh, Max Julian when they were at the bar, and uh, <laughs> uh, they were drinking, and um, we were just talking about oh, what you're playing. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I didn't run. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, I actually, you and me, baby. You and me, baby. <laughs> I actually want to play um, really quick, and let me get my little connections. It may not come off very well. Um, it's going to come off really, really light, so kind of bear with me. I'm going to play a conversation that he had. Not that conversation, but this is off the back of Pretty Tony getting at Goldie for knocking one of his females, and they had a competition about getting that money. So here, let me turn it up real quick. Anyway, my baby be in a couple of minutes, lay more money. <clears throat> All men and you niggas ever seen. Well, this lady coming in with more money we ever seen. Okay. Yeah. Who? <laughs> this nigga over yeah. here. Please don't yeah. shout it out. Yeah, that yeah. Oh, man. Right, right, right. I know she can do it. That's right. <laughs> Right. Yeah, the bitch walked in with so much money I had to give him a free truck to help me. Damn, I wish you teach you how to throw a seven. God damn. Come here, Phil. Okay, my man Slim's coming at it and I'm dropping you. Well, you got to worry about it. I've been with this two years. Two years and I ain't touched it. I got two hundred thousand dollars from her. Oh, 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 hey man, there's Chinatown. Hey, baby. Hey, hey, how you do? Remember me? I'd have to lose all the brain cells in my head before I could get something as fine as you. Does everyone need an audition to get with you? You ain't got to go through all that shit. Well, then I choose you. Be cool, baby, okay? Hey, bitch, come here. Got your motherfucking man, come here. Mr. Pretty Tony, I mean, you know the rules of the game. I mean, your bitch just chose me. Now, we can settle this like you got some class, so we can get into some gangster shit. You shade tree nigga. You, you ain't no pimp. You're a rest haven for hoes. You're a car thief, a car thief. The one you got out there is probably hot as a firecracker right now. It was $35,000. $35,000 huh? $35, cash money? No, no, I get one thirty, $35,000 plus one, right? The one I gave you. No, you gave me six, though, right? That's it was true. one, I had one, it was six, and a $35,000 plus one plus six leaves seven. $35,000 and seven, right? Motherfucker, can you buy that? <laughs> Motherfucker, can you buy that? And then, what you can't, I don't know, you can't see it. I didn't, and I just caught it. I literally just caught this. Um, so after Goldie says that, then the guy next to him starts pulling his money out and count, counting in front of Pretty Tony laughing. <laughs> he pulling out one single bills one at a time, so that's why he got slapped in the mouth. I didn't catch that for whatever reason, but yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's what happened with that police scene. So that's probably one of the most iconic scenes in terms of I've heard that in many rap songs as intro. Uh, I forgot the most recent one where they use that. Yeah, I heard that. I mean, that's probably the first place I heard it on um, um, the CD before I um, saw even saw the movie. I okay. didn't see the film until uh, the year two thousand and maybe two thousand. In two thousand, two thousand one. No kidding. Uh, yeah, it's one to the yeah. It was all PCC. I went to college. I, th I I I'm not too far behind you. Like, I think I the first the first time I saw it was like nineteen ninety seven, and I thought it was a terrible movie. I because again I didn't understand life in general. It was I, my world was really sheltered. Mm -hmm. So outside of it, I was like, man, this movie's dumb. And then when I, I watched it again, when I became an adult, I, I don't remember what year, I was like, oh, 
that that makes sense. <laughs> oh, I get it. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. So um, now we're at the tail end of the movie. Again, Goldie's hustled his way to the top. He's top pimp. Um, the cops are definitely on his behind because he's, he's refusing to hustle. And because he refused to work with the fat man, the fat man end up killing the most important person in Goldie's life. Yes, um, the fat man, the fat man, uh, has the police kill, um, Goldie's mother. Do, 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 do. Which, um, ends up causing Goldie Slim and his brother Olinga to team up to go check out the fat man. Well, they didn't know it wasn't a fat man first. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, no, 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 no. I mean, what, they were going. I'm sorry to go check out the department uh, or the police. The police were just in in the way first. Well, they they actually so they, up, <laughs> they actually killed Pretty Tony. They thought Pretty because because of the conflict him and Tony had. Um, he just knew Pretty Tony was the one who killed his wife. And so again, one of the most iconic scenes. He chases his mom. Yeah, uh, he thought he Pre- his wife. Oh, excuse me. My bad. He thought they thought that Pretty Tony killed. Uh, Goldie's uh, my, uh, dang, you got me confused now. They thought he told me killed his mama. So Slim and Goldie and his brother chase down Pre Tony into this little abandoned warehouse, and Goldie tells him after beating him up a couple times to pull out a knife and to stick himself. I don't know about right, you. Right, you right. gonna have to shoot <laughs> me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Yourself. Yeah, <laughs> the fuck? I don't kill myself. This is the motherfucking Goldie. You know why? Because Goldie was Goldie. Exactly. Just shows you the person he was. Goldie wasn't a killer. He got a killer. Mm-hmm. So he, he couldn't kill Tony Tony himself. He just put him in a position where Tony had, thought he had nothing else to do but to kill himself. That ain't true, so, bro. Motherfuck- because you you okay, forget okay. you I'm forget sorry. I'm sorry you forget he put the bomb on after he didn't stab himself four or five times he put the bomb on uh, pretty Tony's lap put a timer on it walked off and blew that whole floor off yeah he did do that <laughs> that dude was cold he was cold blooded you know what I mean? yeah yeah he did do that. yeah he did do that <laughs> so so. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, at the end of the movie, once he find out that it really wasn't Pretty Tony, that it was the fat man, um, it was game over. Uh, and now he's devising a way to, you know, work his street credibility um, to get next to the fat man. Um, do you remember how they died or how they end up killing him? Killing the fat man yeah. or the police? Well, actually, the police. Right, um, they had a shootout. Yeah, um, they had a shootout, and um, um, uh, which probably gets killed. The the second uh, cop end up um getting killed by the righteous brother, Mister Olinga himself. By o- Olinga. Yeah. yeah, and I ain't gonna lie to you, Otto. Uh, a uh, uh, brother Olinga was kind of swole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, uh, he had that gun in his body. <laughs> John Amos did look like he played football once upon a time, though. <laughs> you know what? All them cats, like, is it me or did everybody in the seventies, dude? They all look like they've been working cotton with afros. You know what I'm saying? And dashikis, like, they just had a hardened look about who they were. Like, life must have been tough, boy. Yeah, it must have been. Tough. Uh, yeah, I mean, or growing up was tough. That's why. That's why the people now. Everyone looks softer and more just mushier, like because they grew up, they had easy lives. They grew up easier. wasn't so much stress. They don't. They don't need so much cocoa butter. Back then, everybody was. Cr- <laughs> Back then, everybody was was crispy. His life was just hard and rough, man. You need you ash. You need you, you need Vaseline. You need Vaseline on everything. Greasy forehead everywhere. You know what I mean? But now, it's better now. Oh, the that's my right, man. We, we, we don't need as much cocoa butter anymore. 
<laughs> and it's making me laugh because they was shiny back then. Like, yo, I didn't know what that was. I was like, man, are they? Is, every, is it that hot? No, it's a cocoa butter. You know I mean, <laughs> yes, yes, the cocoa butter. Let me find out. That's the difference between struggling and not struggling. The amount of cocoa butter that you gotta use. I did, I did. I never made that uh, correlation. Shout out to Otto, man. That was that was genius. <laughs> the struggle is real. The struggle is real. So let's all you got is cheap lotion and Vaseline. That that's all we got, man. Let me find out. Um, or cooking oil, or you use, use the same use the same oil you use for to cook with. I thought I was the only person. That, so you did that when growing up, like your mom put bacon grease on your body. Uh, Vaseline. Yeah. Okay. Vaseline over the whole over the whole body. Yeah. Okay. Vaseline. I wasn't. I was just my little brother. My little brother was born. And he was uh, getting all this Johnson and Johnson's pink. Soft, uh, baby lotion and stuff. I'm over here using this greasy stuff, and, and it'd be greasy too for a while. I even try to smear it, yeah. wiping and wiping and wiping. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, I I grew up in a gutter, homie. My mom literally took baking grease, and I used to go to school smell like smoked ham. <laughs> Dude, I was exactly man. I was so smell greasy. Like, smell like fried chicken. Smell like fried chicken. Like, hey, what? The, did you just? Oh, duh, upholding every stereotype. Every white person that walked by me like, yeah, that's it. <laughs> but um, my head, I used to be, huh? Yeah, get a little, go, uh, getting ready, getting ready to go, uh, go to school. Oh, uh, hold on, you, Ashley, go, go and give me, a, go get a spoon, give me a little bit of that grease out of that, 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 uh, that can out on the stove. I hate you it. Get a little grease out of that can on the stove. Put it in your hand, rub it together, rub it together. Come here, come here. <laughs> <laughs> like, ah, ah, you stuff. Duh. Then you got like, then you got like, then you got like hard, you got greasy spots, some spots, actually, some spots greasy. <laughs> you, know, level out. you got hot spots of lotion on your body. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <I'm> like, so, <laughs> I used to be so greasy when I went to school. Um, back, you know, in elementary is the long brown papers with the big lines. When I would touch it, mm-hmm. it would start getting it'll, it'll start looking like uh, French fry paper. You know what I mean? Like you couldn't see the letters because the grease uh, in my hand. Yeah. So I was like, when I turned my homework uh, in, kids used to tease me. I'm like, we can't even see your name. Why are you so greasy? <laughs> Uh, got like uh, handprints in your paper. You put up in the air in the bruh, sky. You see right through it, bruh, bruh. And then we moved up in the world. Well, I thought we moved up when we stopped using bacon grease, and my mom started putting olive oil on me. I was like, oh, we moving up, but that yeah, joint, that it joint. smells better. <laughs> it smells better. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But it was still. But you still getting. You were still getting olive oil. From the kitchen section, it wasn't in the, uh, in, the, in, in, the in the hallway closet cabinet section. It wasn't dedicated to your body. You were still cooking with that. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. It wasn't kept in, underneath the sink in the, in the cupboard in the bathroom. Uh, this is right next to the ketchup and the Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> Worcestershire sauce, my lotion. It was all side by side. Oh, oh man! Uh, so yeah, yeah man. so at the end of the movie, um, they Goldie gets his revenge, kills both cops, and he ends up leaving Oakland because it it, it just got too dangerous for him, and that's how the movie ends. It's, 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 yeah, it's, it's, yeah, we mean, just and that's what happens. People move on with their lives. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean, like. But again, that lets you know that in Oakland, he had to either choose Black Panther or Pimpin, is what he thought he had to do, or work some. Job where you were uh, working more than where you earning. I, I think that was. The, I think that's the name. And, Go ahead. And, and uh, I think uh, it's kind of hard for people. It's hard for people's egos to to um, to struggle amongst your peers. It's like you. It's for, Movies, a lot of movies, a lot of movies can end like that, where somebody just has to just leave home and start all over. And they'll, they'll, and when they leave home, they they end up doing things they were willing to do when they're at home. 
like taking a job and taking a job at a burger joint in a whole other place. Um, but they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't do it back home. Um, Yo, just, you remember that cartoon? I mean, that cartoon that car- that commercial McDonald's used to have. Calvin got a job. And Calvin, yeah. <laughs> and all the time we talk about yeah. him, like, where you going? Oh, I gotta go to work. Oh, yeah. and then he get, yeah. and then, and I hate, I hate this commercial because you know, okay, you know, stay woke, you know, hotel. I'm on, I'm on that right now. So he going through the hood, he cheesing, he's not hanging, quote unquote, hanging out on the block with his homies. But he got a job working behind a cash register, making money. And then a second commercial that came out, oh, Calvin's a manager now at McDonald's. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, he's uh, this black dude that's moved up in the world by. Upgrade. 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 Get out of here. I, I hate it. I hate it. It's with a passion. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Just like McDonald's do now with that cafe commercials, they're targeting black people because they know that we're at the bottom of the demographic in terms of uh, money making potential. So it's like, nah, I'm not with it. I wasn't with it. I hated commercial then, yeah. but I hate it now. But 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 hey, you can't hate the players. Hate the game. Boom, check a pack. Wow, the game. Yeah. So, um, as in in conclusion, um, one name your favorite scene. Two, uh, what did you get? What was the most? I guess the biggest principle or moral of the story that you got? Uh, again, my favorite scene was uh, and I didn't run. I didn't run when uh, when they're sitting at the bar, again when they're sitting at the bar. Okay. And, uh, Richard Pryor and uh. And they have a conversation and Richard start talking about and and, and Max is just talking so so smooth. Yeah. They right. just, they, they, uh, and and lips barely moving and stuff. Looking uh, looking like a, a Native American and everything and shit. And then <laughs> <laughs> you know, Pryor, with his good hair. <laughs> <laughs> and then you got Richard Pryor over here talking and, and uh with his Sharp um, black mustache, or talking talk about fucking Max's titties, stuff like that. Just playing, just joking around. You know what I mean? Being the Richard that I that I, that I love, man. That I, that inspires me to be Autobots, you know. So um, that was my best scene. I guess the best thing, I, the best thing I uh, got from the film was um, was uh, man. Well, why you think about that? Um, hey, hey. The, the 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 at that same bar scene. And then we skipped, kind of skipped over it, but he did this whole monologue. He was, and, and this is, the, I was rooting for Goldie at this point because I was like, oh, he really realizes um, the error in his ways when he was like, I can't understand how a woman walks down the street, gives her money to this unknown man, <laughs> yeah. and, and he was like, and, and Richard was like, yeah. because your game is tight. He was like, oh, I wasn't talking about me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I was like, this Negro, I can't stand yeah, you. Exactly. <laughs> Right. I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, he, he, he acknowledges the wrong, the wrong and stuff, but I mean, he just, that's somebody, I guess that when you know and feel, feel special in yourself, yeah. there is a bit of um, cockiness or confidence that you, you, you know what I mean? We're, we're, told, we're told not to voice it, but we all should have it, you know? That's true. That's true. So what was your, what, what did you walk away from the movie with? Uh, yeah, man, the game, man. Don't, don't hate the player, hate the game. Okay, because I mean, it's like I can't be mad even in life. You know what I mean? Yeah. I can't be. I was born into his life the way that it is, so yeah. I can't I hate all the other players who are in it. You know what I mean? I can't hate you because you're white. I can't hate you because you're this race. We just in it, and we all trying to survive and be happy. Okay. Um, so we got to play the game. We got to, we either got to play the game. Right. And, and, and win, you know what I mean? Or, yeah. My, my favorite yeah. scene in the movie, I I have a bunch of them, but like the, the dumbest scene ever, but it was so entertaining to me was in the dream sequence when he got these fake dollar bills falling down. He got his legs in the air and he's kicking. <laughs> uh, and like, it's I like, that was, I don't know. I thought it was like the cheesiest fucking scene ever. I, I like, now, don't get me wrong. Some of these favorite movies, 
make make you like this is terrible. Like it's like that's this is just make it this this is terrible. It's like it's, it's the quality, or I guess when comparison to people who had all the money and the tools and access and the time yeah. to create a production versus somebody who got a, a short period of time, very little money, limited resources, and yeah. You got so it. I, I get it. I, I do get too. It. I get it, but that's, it'd be like, yeah, that's terrible. Man. Like, Come on, man. Come on. Yeah, hey. <laughs> like, can we remaster this one time, please? Can we like re-edit that? Let's do some George Lucas on this or something. That's what you that said, part. George Lucas. <laughs> yeah, For real, man. That's exactly how I felt. Like I, everything that you articulated. Like I understand that you was limited on budget. You didn't have as much time, so you know you had to do what you got to do to transition, get from one scene to the next. However, like I have a affinity for stuff like that. I got into B-rated movies, and when I say B-rated, uh, movies that are under a certain uh, dollar amount. Um, I've loved those okay, kind of movies. Okay, yeah, I love those kind of movies since the beginning of time. Like Paper Soldiers with Kevin Hart, to me, is like one of the funniest movies love ever. It. You know what I mean? Like, love it. No, yeah. no, Benny Siegel was so awesome in that movie. <laughs> Dog, he acted in that. To me, I'm like, yo, you was kind of impressive. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that was his first. I think, was, I think that was his first movie too. Yeah, yeah good job. I was impressive. I was impressed, even though it was a comedy. Like. At one point, I was actually feeling his pain when he was like, man, I got kids. You know what I mean? He showed the necklace. Like, I felt that was real, homie. Like, yeah. He, he, acted, he acted. But so, yeah. that was my favorite scene with the money sprinkling down. Um, what I got from the movie, as you was talking, I even, again, I try not to put myself morally in the place of the writer or the director because it's their story to tell. However, I always do right. look for a redemption factor. And what I got from it was that when you put somebody in a position or a group of people in a position where they feel like not that it's a reality, but if they feel like they don't have any choices, these are the type of choices that they make. And you can't get mad at them when they come up into your side and they're expressing a lifestyle that you have been suppressing them. You know, and in this movie, um, the white people in this movie was very oppressive. And it was really getting down on this demographic. So, um, black people, when they come together, uh, whoa, oh, when uh, my man Olinga was talking about, yeah, they even tr- they're even trying to steal our handshake, but we just keep adding on to it. I'm like, is that why them handshakes be so long? <laughs> yeah, I agree, man. I, agree. Yeah. I was like, I like yeah. yeah, it's like, okay, we first doing what? Oh, uh, we got to do. Seven handshakes now because uh, white people are doing three now. Yeah. So you gotta. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, that, that was pretty dope. So um, I appreciate the hustle of Olinga and um, him trying to change the community from outside of a life because he didn't go to prison. Um, his brother did, but he still chose to come out that lifestyle. So that was something that I appreciated. You can change if you want to. However, if a people, if a person feels like they can't change, um, don't get mad at the consequences behind that. We gotta help our brothers and sisters. So that was it. Any last uh peace before- to the brothers Peace to the brothers and sisters, death to the fake. <laughs> you smell me. <laughs> <laughs> um how can the people look you up if they want to know more about Autobots? What's your contact info? They wanna find they wanna find Autobots, you can find Autobots uh at Autobots on Twitter. Um Autobots on Facebook. Uh, Autobots is spelled O T T O B O T S. You dig? Um, you can also find me on uh, Music uh, Music Alley at at Autobots. Uh, you can find me on Instagram under Autophoto. And yeah. And if you want to look me up, just look up the website thirty Parkwood dot com. Or type in my name on the internet. Something will pop up. I'm Maurice Hawkins. That's spelled A-M-A-R-I-C-H-E. Um, I do have an Instagram. Uh, it's at... Uh, what's my Instagram? Schizo Christian. Or you can look up... Just type in Schizophrenic Christian on the internet. Something will come up. I don't, I don't even keep up with my stuff. Like, it's... it's you know, time is tough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We gotta tough. keep... We gotta, we gotta stay current, man. And, yeah, yeah. Um... We gotta stay current and uh, and keep it going. Yes, and, sir. Yeah. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, wait, tune in to our next episode. We don't know what we're going to talk about, discuss. Um, that will be up to Otto. Whatever he wants to talk about, whatever movie he wants to discuss, then okay. we'll, we'll, we'll and, then, and if you got, well, you know, we, we got, we got, a, we got a, we have a few, a few in, 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 in the queue. But if you guys are interested in wanting to hear us discuss anything, please uh, comment, uh, text us, do what you do what you can to get in contact with us, and send us your suggestions. Uh, the email is 30parkwood at gmail.com. That's 30parkwood at gmail, 30parkwood at gmail.com. We also have a phone number, which uh, I don't have it on hand. I don't even know the own. I'm sorry, dog. That's so unprofessional. I know it's... It's, it's all right. It's cool. We going straight to 30 Parkwood. <laughs> whoa, whoa. At gmail.com. 30 Parkwood at gmail.com. Gmail. Hit us up. We love you all. Peace.